What's up, Cal Gang? Welcome back to Mechanics and Materials. So let's solve this problem. So I just solved 5-6, very similar to this question, but now we're finding CD and EF. So we're given a solid shaft with a diameter of 0.75 inches, and we want to find basically the maximum shear stress in between C and D and in between E and F. So I went ahead and drew kind of a 2D image of this, and so let's go ahead and get started. So the first step is we're going to use this equation, right? Our shear stress is equal to the torque, the internal torque, right, uh, times the distance over the polar moment of inertia. So the polar moment of inertia we can calculate really easy, but we need to find out what the torque is in between CD and E and F. So here and here. So to do that, it's kind of like we're taking cuts uh, to find the shear, but instead we're doing it with torque. So first of all, if you add all of these up, it's going to be 35 minus 20 minus 40 plus 25, you're going to get zero. That means that our torque is set at constant, so the rod is not rotating. It's going to stay still. So that means that we're going to have no torque at A and F, which is true because we know that it's free rotation at that point. So if we want to find what the internal torque is at those points, let's start with EF. So we can take a cut at any point and work down any side. So let's take a cut. Uh, I'm going to take a cut like this. So we're going to cut off basically everything to the right. You can't see any of that. It's all gone. So you can see F, any point between E and F, it's going to have no torque in it. So we can say that the torque E to F is equal to zero. So then let's see what the inter internal torque between C D is. So again, let's take this cut in between C and D. So now we're just looking at this. So we have negative 25 plus 40. So if you take 25 down plus 40, we're going to have positive 15. So torque between C and D is equal to 15 pound feet. Okay, hopefully I did that right. Wait a minute, I'm here. Okay, and you could do that the other way too, because we know that they're equal to each other. No matter which side you do it from, you'll get the same. You can see it's 35 minus 20, 15 feet. So we have pound feet, but we want pound inches because we're going to find an answer in PSI. So if we convert this to pound inches, it's going to be 15 times 20, which is 180 pound inches. Okay. So then, last thing we need is our polar moment of inertia of J. So to solve for J, it's going to be pi over 2. And then C is our radius. So our radius is 0 0.375, right? Diameter divided by two. Raise that to the fourth. You get 0 point, uh, 0.0316. Oh, never mind. I got that wrong. 106. And this is inches to the fourth. Okay, so then we just need to plug it into the equation. We don't even have to do EF, right? Because if T is equal to zero, then all of this is equal to zero. So we can go ahead and say that our shear stress in EF is equal to zero. That's the easy one. Now if you want to find for, what is it, CD? Let's plug in what we know. We have 1800, or 18, 180, excuse me, for the torque. Distance is our radius again, 0.375. And then J is at 0 0.03106. Now plug this in your calculator, and you're going to get 2,170 PSI. And those are answers. Not too hard, right? So yeah, check out my other video if you're having trouble. Check out my playlist for just general problems. Uh, yeah, and come learn with me. So I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Thanks for all your support. Bye.